Right. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Don't let no one steal your crown. Faith of our fathers. We will be true till the death. He who endures to the end will be saved. Will be saved right? Amen. Let us pray. Holy Father, I ask that your words be shared here today. Please be with me, remove self from your message, and let only your glorious knowledge shine forth. Let us behold your glory in the face of our Lord by abiding in your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. My one-year-old said, Amen. <laughs> All right. So, before we start our sermon, I'd like to thank all our veterans for their service. You know, every year I'm reminded on this time of the day of my own military service. And uh, there was a few times when I would uh, pray and ask the Lord, you know, Lord, do you hear my prayers? Do you hear my prayers? And uh, so some of these veterans are in the battlefields when they pray those prayers. And they are uh, down in the depths of the ocean or they're out in the middle of the fields in the trenches. Sometimes we find ourselves getting closer to the Lord than ever in those positions. And, uh, and don't even realize how the Lord might be leading us. But I can tell you, God hears your prayers. Thank you, veterans, for your service. Thank God for His grace and His mercy. He is uh, performing miracles. He has promised to take care of us. He watches over us. We don't always understand what we get but God is a merciful gracious beautiful God isn't he amen, amen. amen. Malachi 4 5 was our scripture reading behold I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord what day is that that'd be the resurrection wouldn't it so is Elijah coming back to meet us? No. Or is it the spirit of Elijah? It's talking about the spirit of Elijah. Didn't John the Baptist also come in the spirit of Elijah? Yes. I want to share a little something with y'all. October 31st, 2017. What does that day signify? It's what? 500 years ago is was the beginning, beginning of the Reformation. That is exactly right. And what happened in 1517, October the 31st? Martin Luther takes how many theses? 95 theses, and he nails them to a chapel door. Right? Why is he doing this? Because he was what? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Protesting. He was protesting. How many churches today is saying the protest is over? Too many. Too many, isn't it? Too many. Is the protest over? No. Uh, you know what? I am a Protestant. I'm going to remain a Protestant until the mother church changes. That's not going to happen. <laughs> I guess I'm going to remain a Protestant then. Okay, now I want to tell you this. I want to go right to the heart of what I'm protesting today. Come out of Babylon. Oh, you Babylon hollers, you're doing it again. Yes, I'm going to holler Babylon. I did not point a finger at any church. But I will. This message may piss some people off. It's going to upset people. It's going to hurt feelings. For those out there. But I'm going to share the truth. 
the way it is. This is a little loud, isn't it? This this seems a little. It's good for the old. How's that? Is that a little better? Okay. All right. Uh, so I'm going to share the truth as it is, and what I'm going to say is, if I step on some toes, I'm not apologizing because it's the truth. And I do it with love. I'm not going to do it out, outside of that. But, you know, so many people today want to say, you're a Babylon hollower. You're accusing this church or that church. The Seventh-day Adventist church is not Babylon. Quit sipping the wine. <laughs> okay, I mean, is that plain enough? Seventh-day Adventist? Quit drinking their wine. Did I call the Seventh-day Adventist church Babylon? No, no. But they're drunk. The whole world is following after the beast. They either worship on the wrong day or they're worshiping the wrong God. Plain and simple. This is our only safety right here. Are you going to believe what man says? Or are you going to study the Word of God? If you base your faith on everything a preacher says, by the way, I'm not a educated theologian you better test me I didn't go to college by the way for all of you out there that saying Houston didn't go to college well I'm just gonna tell you straightforward I didn't go to college to do this in case you were wondering <laughs> okay but that's all right because I'm a carpenter I'm a builder and my Lord, guess what he was? <laughs> and guess what Apostle Paul was? And, you know, I can go on and on on this. Who leads you into truth? The Holy Spirit. Here's your map. In prayer, you gain the compass. And it's time to go home. It's getting close. It's getting closer. So here's what Martin Luther says. After he nails these 95 theses, this is the 500 year anniversary this year, and all these daughters of Babylon are flocking back to her. It's the protest over. The whole world's hollering, peace, peace. Is there any peace? No. There's only one peace I want. And that's the peace my Lord promised to leave with us. Is that the peace you want? Peace I leave with you? Didn't Jesus say that? Martin Luther says this. Martin Luther was, he was a monk. He was in the Catholic Church. He said a lot of things. As a matter of fact, Martin Luther said in some of his writings that the seat of the papacy was the seat of Satan himself. That he was absolutely antichrist. Martin Luther said that. Isn't that something? That, by, that was a quote, by the way. I'm going to read you another quote. Unless I am convinced, this is Martin Luther. Let me tell you what they did. They said, you need to recant and submit to the religious authorities. That sounds like the Pharisees, doesn't it? Who persecuted Christ. Pharisees. Unless I am convinced, this is Martin Luther, unless I am convinced by the testimony of Scripture, or by the clearest reasoning, the clearest reasoning, Protestants. Yeah, I'm going to be stepping on some toes today. One plus one plus one does not equal what? <laughs> uh, I, I'm sorry, I get a little carried away sometimes. That's for them Protestants out there that believe that, that wine. Are you, are you drinking some of that? Get off the wine.
thus I am persuaded by means of the passages I have quoted. And unless they thus render my conscience bound by the word of God, I cannot and I will not retract. Is he staying true even unto death? This was it written. He could have been killed right then. He could have been put to death. I will not retract. Here I stand. I can do no other. May God help me. Amen. Amen. Oh, I got a dead church. <laughs> All right, we got we got a couple out here now. So turn with me to Joshua 24, 15 real quick. Joshua 24, 15. Let's look at some scripture. A little bit here and there. Joshua 24, 15. Say amen when you're there. It's in the Old Testament. 24? 24, 15. <clears throat> And if, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, in the Bible this word is all capital letters, all uppercase. I'm not going to go and explain everything in detail today. We've all covered it. This is Yahuwah. Yahweh, Yodhe, Wahe. I had a man tell me Theos in the New Testament is not Yahuwah. The God of the Old Testament is the same God of the New Testament. Amen. I love that. Now we get some activity going. Uh, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, all capital uppercase, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether it be the gods of your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood before God destroyed that evil generation, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But for me and my house, we will serve who? The Lord. The Lord. Joshua was a type of Christ, wasn't he? But what he's saying here, he's saying we will serve the Lord. What is that spirit of Elijah? What is the spirit of Elijah that's coming in the last days? So many of our brothers and sisters in these Protestant churches are missing it. They're missing. Hey, let me ask you all a question. Did the Israelites know the first coming of Jesus when he came in the flesh? Did they recognize our Lord? No. Did they recognize him? Or did they persecute him and hang the Prince of Glory upon a cross? Yeah. I tell you the truth today. My God is Yahuwah, and my Lord is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. That is my foundation. That's biblical. That's biblical. You got to know. You got to know who God is. People say it doesn't really matter. The spirit of Elijah will turn your hearts back to who? The Lord. To the Lord. The spirit of Elijah points out the one true God. Eliyahu. My God is Yahuwah. That is the name Elijah. My God is Yahuwah. Do you disagree? Yes. Yeah. Okay, we'll talk later. I'm sorry, baby. That's all right. We'll talk later. Everything I base the scriptures is, is all based on scripture. And I can do a study with you if you like after church, okay? Sometime. Sometime if you like. We'll go through the Word of God together. Okay? So, Eliyahu in the Hebrew, the very name means Eli, Yahoo. My God is Yahuwah. It's exactly what it means. That's the Hebrew name, Eli Yahoo. So moving on, 1 Kings. Turn with me to 1 Kings 18, 17 through 22. 1 Kings 18. <clears throat> Seventeen. Tell me when you're there. Amen. It's okay to disagree, by the way. We'll cover it later. We'll talk about it. We'll write back and forth. We'll have dialogues. I'm glad that is honest. 
and I like honesty. Speak up if you disagree, and we'll examine the word together and reason out together. I like that. We know me. Mm-hmm. 17. First Kings 17. Y'all there? Amen. I'm sorry. First Kings 18, 17. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou that troubleth Israel? Are you the one that troubleth Israel? This was the king asking Elijah, the prophet, Aren't you the one that troubleth Israel? And what does Elijah say? And he answered, I have, I have not troubled Israel. I'm going to tell you, the true church of God, that speak the truth according to the word, are troubling somebody. They feel troubled. And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but you, thou, and thy father's house, in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord. When you see all four letters, uppercase, in the Hebrew, it is Yahuwah. You can look it up. He says, it is you and your house that have forsaken the commandments of Yahuwah, the Lord. And thou hast followed Balaam. You know, there's many people following Baal today. I want to read on there because we got a lot to cover. I'm going to read to uh, verse 22 here. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel and the prophets of Baal, 450, and the prophets of the groves, 400. There's 850 prophets total which eat at Jezebel's table. We have a Jezebel today. So Ahab sent all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If Yahuwah, if the Lord be God, follow him. But if but all, then follow him. And the people answered him, not a word. Now, but all worship, we covered this. But all, Ishtar, and Tammuz is the false god. If you don't understand, give me later, I'll explain it again. But all was the sun god. And these people got to where they were worshiping a false god. And Elijah came and said, If your God be the true God, worship him. But if my God is the true God, worship him. Who is his God? His very name pointed out who his God was. Eliyahu. Elijah. My God is Yahuwah. And what does he tell Ahab? He says, You and your house have forsaken the commandments of the Lord. I'm not the one that troubleth Israel. <laughs> but somebody's trouble, isn't it? I love it. I love this. I love this prophet, Elijah. Remember when the Baal worshipers were dancing around, cutting themselves? And, and they were trying to get their God to bring fire down from heaven and take the sacrifice back up? And Elijah says, Maybe he's on a far journey. Maybe he's resting. Maybe you should cut yourselves a little deeper. That's a little harder. <laughs> yeah. So, they know not who they worship, do they? So the spirit of Elijah is a call back to worship the right God. And the end time message is the three angels' messages. Straight from the book of Revelation 14. And we're going to cover this. Revelation 14 today, we're going to talk about it. Luke 1, 15. Go with me to Luke chapter 1, verse 15. I'm going to point some things out to you today. For you all who have your Bibles, turn with me to Luke chapter 1. It helps if you read the Word of God for yourself. Let me tell you this. 
If you base your faith on what the pastor is telling you, it is not faith at all. Do you hear what I just said? If you're basing your faith on your pastor's words, it is no faith. Search it out. Study your own Bibles. Test every spirit. Everything I say will come right from here. Luke chapter 1 verse 15. Everybody that knows me, I told you earlier I was a carpenter. I started out as a carpenter. Eventually I got three different trades. I mastered those trades. I master mechanical, master electrical, master builder. Licensed in all three areas. And then I went after a license for plumbing for master plumber and I failed it by two points. And I said, that's enough. I'm not retaking that test. My whole point is this. Build your foundation. Everyone that knows me knows that I have sat down and read entire code books. Code books. From cover to cover. Not once. Not twice. Three times over. When I got into the Word of God, in 2007, I'm a babe compared to some of you that's been in the Word of God. I treated this book like God's code book. And I read it from cover to cover 12 times plus. Test me. Put me to the test. Back up everything you say from Scripture. Because guess what? I got the facts. <laughs> Get your facts together. When you come, have them together. And I say that for the benefit of those out there that would uh, question anything I'm sharing. Question me. Write your comments. I'd love to see them. So go in here to, to Luke 1, 15, 17. Everybody's there but me, right? Okay, 15. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. Who is this referring to? And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall be turned to who? To the Lord their God. Now, this is talking about John the Baptist. Now, did John the Baptist come in the spirit of Elijah? Yes. Who will he turn the hearts of the people to? Jesus. The Lord our what? Who did Elijah turn the hearts of the people to? To the Lord. Christ. To God. To God. He, what did he tell Ahab? I just read it. What did he tell Ahab? I'm not the one that troubleth Israel. You are. Because you and your house has caused the people of Israel to forget the commandments of who? The Lord your who? The Lord your God. Okay. <clears throat> 15 to 17. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. To make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Turn with me to John 1, 22. John 1, 22.
Then said they unto him, we're going to read from uh, 22 to 34. Then said they unto him, who art thou? That we may give an answer to them that sent me. This is the Pharisees and the scribes. What sayest thou of thyself? And he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Who is this speaking? John the Baptist. John the Baptist. All right, listen to what he said. I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet who? Elijah. Elijah. As said the prophet Elijah. This is in the New Testament. It's the same. Y'all see the comparisons now? You see the comparisons here? He's in the spirit of Elijah. And he's turning the hearts of the people of Israel. Are y'all spiritual Israel today? Yes. Yes. Is the spirit of Elijah going to come before that great dreadful day of the Lord? Yes. Malachi chapter 4 verse 5, right? The spirit of Elijah is going to come. And it's going to come in who? Is Elijah himself coming? It's going to come in God's people, right? And what are they going to help do? They're going to help turn the hearts of the people back to the one true God of the Bible. And they're going, to, they're going to help cut through all this wine of Babylon. All the false doctrines. That's what we need. We need to hear the truth. If you believe a priest, if you believe a pastor, and you don't study this, it can lead you where? Straight into the gates of hell. Do y'all want to be in heaven or hell? Heaven. We need to study. Study. Study it out. God give us reasoning, ability to study it for ourselves. So 1 John 22. Then said he unto them, Who art thou? That we may give an answer to them. That said, and he said, John the Baptist said this, I am the voice of of one crying in the wilderness. Was, was Elijah the voice of one crying in the wilderness? Did God bring us out of the land of Egypt? Yes. To where? To wander in the wilderness? To lead us to the promised land. Right? Aren't you in a walk with God after He brings you out of darkness? Isn't he leading you step by step toward the promised land? Amen. He says, in the spirit of Elijah, I am a, he did say, I'm John the Baptist. I'm John. No, he said, I am a voice of one crying in the wilderness. And then he goes on to say what he's crying, what that message is. And they which were sent Then said they unto him, Who art thou? And he says that, and in verse 24, And they which was sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him, and said unto him, Why baptizest thou then, if thou be not the Christ, nor Elijah, neither that prophet? So you're not the prophet Elijah, and you're not the anointed Messiah. Why do you have the authority to baptize people? John answered then, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you whom ye know not. I'm going to tell you right now, Jesus is here among us now. And most of the Protestant church doesn't realize he's here because of the wine of Babylon. They missed him in the physical and they're missing him in the spiritual. Amazing. That just blows my mind. We have to study it out. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me whose shoes latch it. I am not worthy to lung loose. These things were done in Bethabara beyond Jordan where John was baptizing. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Did John the Baptist recognize Jesus? Yes, he did. He was in the spirit of who? Who is Jesus? See, you've got to establish who God is. We need to qualify again who God is according to the Word of God, don't we? According to what? 
the Word of God. He's given us everything we need right here. This is he whom I said, After me cometh a man which is before, before me, for he was before me. And I knew him not. Was John born before Jesus? I love this. God doesn't make mistakes, brother. But here John says Jesus was before him. But John was born before Jesus. Ah. <laughs> And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore, I am I come baptizing with water. And John bare record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven as a dove upon him and abode upon him. And it goes on. Let me tell you this. It says, Jesus is the one who would baptize with what? John the Baptist says, keep reading the Bible, and he'll tell you, it is Jesus who will baptize you with the Spirit. Do you want to be baptized with the Spirit? Baptism means to be totally covered and immersed with something. When you go to baptism in the water, it means to be submerged and immersed and to be completely covered. So when you're baptized with the Spirit, am I receiving a separate being over me? How can you receive a separate being over the top of you? Do you ever talk to a drunk person? <laughs> Protestants get off the wine of Babylon. I talk to my brother, but that's what I can get. No, your brother don't drink, does he? Hey, we're going to have a talk later, Mason. <laughs> You're way below the drinking age. <laughs> and so is most Protestants. They just haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> All right, moving on. So, the three angels' messages. I want to tell you all this. The Lord revealed something to me this week. New. Y'all like new stuff? Yes. Me too. The Lord's revealed something to me. A couple of things I want to share with y'all. Can I share it with you? Yes. yes. All right, all right, okay. Let's, let's go here. Let's go to uh, Revelation 14, verse 6 real quick. i got to speed it up. We're running out of time here. By the way, what I'm doing right now is I'm attacking. I'm protesting. Hold on, save your questions for after the uh, sermon, okay? I'd love to visit with you after the sermon. Don't forget, write it down if you have. If you can, don't think you can remember, write your question down, and I'll get with you right after service, okay? Okay, so <clears throat> I want to just say this. I am actually getting ready to protest strongly, and my protest is going to be right at the heart of the foundation Of who Luther protested against because it does not coincide with the Word of God. And I'm going to say this the protest is not over for me. Because for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord, the one true God. This is pretty hard words. And if some of you don't understand, please get with me after the service today, okay? But I speak the truth as it is in the Word of God. As it is in the Word of God. Not man's doctrines. That dogma, dogma is man's doctrines. Man's doctrines, man's dogma, man's ordinances were nailed to the cross. <laughs> that, for sure, that was against us. That was invented by man. Christ took it to the cross. He said it will no longer be against you. Dogma. False theology. It is his spirit. I'm not going to go into great details. I'm going to share something. The mystery of the most holy trinity. False doctrine. Trinity is a false doctrine. It's a mystery. What's written upon the harlot's forehead? Mystery is written upon the harlot's forehead. Mystery is written upon the harlot's forehead. 
at the heart of the foundation of the harlot is a mystery. And it's in our own doctrines. It's written out. And Martin Luther protested against this church. Today, all of our Protestant brothers and sisters are locking hands back with this church. And the Bible tells us this is going to happen. Over 12 times in the Catechism, it tells us it's a mystery. It's a mystery. The Most Holy Trinity. Not only does it tell us it's a mystery, but then it also tells us it's beyond comprehension. It's beyond, please don't shut down on me. Stay with me on this. It's beyond reasoning, is what they say. Beyond reasoning. What does God say? Come, let us reason together. The Bible says come and let us reason together. Well, don't take Houston's word for it. It's just life's code book. You want to be in heaven? When you receive the truth, embrace it. There's a lot to share here. Go to Revelation 17. Let's go to Revelation 17 real quick. I'll, I'll read it to you. What's on the, what's on the uh, harlot's forehead here in Revelation 17? Forehead is the frontal lobe. Guess what the frontal lobe is? It's your reasoning ability. The frontal lobe is the reasoning ability. Verse, chapter 17, verse 5. What does this say? And upon her forehead was a name written. I'm sorry? Mystery. I can't hear you. Mystery. 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 Babylon the Great. I'm going to stop here. I'm going to read straight from the Catechism. The frontal lobe is your forehead. The frontal lobe is the forehead. The frontal lobe is what? I'm just making sure y'all were listening. The frontal lobe is where your reasoning is. I'm sorry I can't hear you. The frontal lobe is where the reasoning is. Straight from Catechism of the Catholic Church, 2nd edition, uh, 234. The mystery of the most holy trinity. Now, y'all listen. How many times did I say mystery? The mystery of the most holy trinity is the central mystery of Christian faith and life. It is the mystery of God in himself. It is therefore the source of all other mysteries of faith and light that enlightens them. And it goes on and on and on. Uh, 235. This paragraph expounds briefly how the mystery of the Blessed Trinity. A what? Mystery. The Blessed Trinity. You know what they say? By the way, I'll give anybody $100 that can prove to me that God is a Trinity from the Word of God. It's not there. Don't come in with your make-believe stuff and try to build an entire doctrine off of one verse. It simply is not in the Bible. Mystery of the Blessed Holy Trinity. Doctrine of the faith regarding this mystery. Mystery, 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 mystery. And in the end it says this is the foundation of all our faith. You know what you got when you believe in a trinity? You have a foundation of sinking sand. Now, can I preach the three angels' message with power if I don't know who God is? Can God bless me the way He wants to bless me if I don't know who God is? Does He weaken my ignorance when I don't know? Will He weaken your ignorance? Yes, he will wink at your ignorance. But when you have come into the light of the truth, does he still wink at your ignorance? No. no. Now, when you're living in ignorance, can he bless you the way he wants to? Yes. Can he bless you fully the way he wants you when you don't know who you're worshiping? No. He'll bless you because he winks at your ignorance. But it's hard to receive a full blessing if you're drunk. <laughs> Am I right? 
And, and who is the limit of that blessing? God or you? We are. Right? You know why? Because we're drunk. Lord, please bless me. You can't even handle the blessing. Can you walk in new truth if you're not standing on the old truth? No. No. Revelation 14.6. I want to just read this to you. Now I'm going to summarize it because we're over time. I don't want to keep you. Well, Y'all want a part two on this? No. You want to pick? You don't want a part two? No. Okay. Keep going. <laughs> we can't keep going because I still have a lot to share. But what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to summarize it, okay? Okay, well then give us part two. Okay. I'll do a part two on this. And then we got a great series coming right behind that on the one true God. One true God. Part two of this. Uh, 14, I'm, I'm y'all way ahead of me already. Revelation 14 and verse 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven. I'm only going to do the first angel's message. I'm only going to share the first angel's message right here. All right, and what I want to explain to you, it's got three of our prominent doctrines there. It's got a relationship between the Father and the Son in it. And it summarizes the first great commandment, which is the four first commandments of the Ten Commandments. All in the first angel's message. That's power of Elijah. That's the power of God. There's seven women that want to take hold of one man and claim his name. But they deny the power thereof. Can they preach this message with power? You know why they can't preach this message with power? Because they don't understand who God is. Can you receive a blessing? If you're not worshiping the one true God. If you don't know who that one true God is. Can he bless you? He loves us. He does bless us. But we cannot grow spiritually. We cannot grow spiritually. Unless we are looking at the one true God. Of the Bible. You see where I'm at? Protestant, brothers and sisters, please, I hope you're listening. Test me. You cannot grow spiritually unless you know who the one true God is. 14.6. And the first angel's message has it written all over it. You have to come in the spirit of Elijah. My God is Yahuwah, the father of Yahushua, the father of Jesus. My God is Yahweh, Jehovah, Yahuwah. And he is also the God of Jesus. When Jesus was up on that cross, what did he say? My God, my God. The Bible tells us who is the God of Jesus? The Father. As a matter of fact, John 17, 3 says, This is eternal life that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. He spoke in the third person. So that was for our benefit. Did you hear what I just said? The third person. He spoke in the third person. For our benefits. Here. Very interesting. So 14, 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven. Having what? The everlasting gospel. What does the true church have? The testimony of who? Christ. Is that the everlasting gospel? Yes. What is the power of God toward you and I? The gospel. Am I speaking too fast? No. It's the gospel of Christ. I always put that. How do you glorify God? By keeping the gospel of Christ before you. I can, I'm going to do all this in the next sermon. I'm going to lay it all out for you on this. I'm going to summarize this. I'm going to read it and I'm going to summarize it. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel, to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, to, to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, watch my fingers, fear God, and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come, and worship Him that made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and the fountains of water. How many fingers am I holding up? How many commandments summarize 
explain the first great commandment? Oh, y'all are on top of this. <laughs> y'all getting it. So how do I fear God? First commandment says what? I am. Oh, I'll just tell you. Do we need to go to Exodus chapter 20 and look at them? Let me summarize it. I am the Lord thy God who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. What? No other gods. What? No you should have no other gods before me. That's the first commandment. Now, if I believe in a false god, do I have another god before God? Yes. Yes, I do. God does wink at our ignorance when we're in it. But once you come into the truth, He's going to hold you accountable. He's going to hold you accountable. And then it goes on to say, <clears throat> and I'm jumping around a bit, and in verse 7, and give glory to Him. How do we give glory to Him? You keep the gospel of God, the gospel of Christ before you, always before you to glorify God who raised His Son from the dead. I can. Do y'all realize there's 27 verses that says God raised Jesus from the dead? I think 27, 25 to 27. God raised Jesus from the dead. Who raised Jesus? Well, then who is God? The Father. the Father. I can prove it from scriptures. Now, am I saying Jesus is not our God? I never said that, did I? I never said that. I didn't make him a lesser God. I said Jesus has a God. The Almighty God. The one true God. Well, for the benefit of some who have never seen it, let's go to John 17.3. John 17, 3, very quickly. John 17, 3. Some of us know this. This, this verse is burned into my brain. This is Jesus speaking. This is Jesus speaking right here. And this is life eternal. What? And we got a sleeping church. This is life eternal. That they might know the truth. That they might know thee who's speaking here. I can't hear you. Jesus. That they might know thee, the only what? True God. Jesus calls his father the only what? True God. The only true God. And he doesn't stop there. He separates himself outside that. He says, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. When Jesus asked Peter, who do you say that I am? You are the Christ. You are the Son, the Son of, the living God. of the living God. Jesus told Peter that foundation that you just spoke is the foundation of my church. That you acknowledge me as the literal. Do you hear me, Protestants? Son of God. All those people that want to say Jesus did not exist in heaven before his birth on earth? Get off the wine of Babylon. He tells him, he says, on that foundation, I will build my church. You better believe that Jesus came here and that he was sent. John 3.16 tells us for the Trinity so loved the world. Is that what it says? Alright, for God so loved the world he gave he gave His only 
begotten son. And it goes on and on. And even Jesus says, I proceeded forth and came from the Father. I came here. I came here. We need to study all this out. Now, I'm going to summarize. I said I was going to summarize. I've already summarized the first four commandments here of the first great commandment, right? Right? Everybody with me? Okay. That sounded real good. <laughs> Everybody's with me. Oh, am I by myself? No. 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 Okay, y'all are with me. Yes. Amen. I want to take you to, I think it's in uh, Luke, uh, real quick, I want to read something to you as part of this summary. Uh, and I don't know if I wrote it down, but I'm going to have to guess it if I didn't. It's, uh, turn with me to Luke 10, 25. Luke 10, it's just a few pages over. Luke 10, 25. Matthew, Mark, Luke. A few pages back, I was wrong. Luke 10, 25. We're going to have to conclude this pretty quick now. Uh, Luke 10, 25. I'm getting there. I got a new Bible. So it's uh, not roughed up like my old one. Thank you, church family, for my Bible. I really like it. Very nice gift. 10, 25. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, tempted him, saying, Master, Lord, Lord, what shall I do to, to, to inherit eternal life? What is he asking him? What shall I do to inherit what? Eternal life. Eternal life. Now listen to Jesus' response. He said unto him, what is written in the law? How readest thou? Does the law still matter? Yes. God's true church will be a commandment-keeping people who had the testimony of Jesus. Revelation chapter 12, verse 14. And Revelation chapter 14 is also written twice in the New Testament. She will be a commandment-keeping people who had the testimony of Jesus. How many churches have uh, keep God's commandments and hold on to Jesus' testimony. How many? Not Very few. And he answered and said, Thou shalt, this is what the young lawyer responded, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind. There's your four commandments again. And he's telling them you should love the Lord your God with all of these things. And he's talking to Jesus. And with all thy mind and with all and thy neighbor as thyself. There's a the second great commandment. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt what? Thou shalt live. And it goes on. If you read, I don't know if it's here or in Matthew, but if you read on about Jesus' response on the first great commandment, you know what he says? When you do these things. You're not far from the kingdom of heaven. Where does Jesus quote from? Where is this young scribe quoting from? In the whole Bible, where is he quoting from? Deuteronomy chapter 6. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one Lord. Let me read it in the Hebrew for you. Would you like that? Hear, O Israel, Yahuwah, your Elohim, is one Yahuwah. Now, if it was the other way around, Trinitarians could probably build a trinity and still try to force their doctrine into that. But it's not the other way around. It says a specific name. Yahuwah, your God, is one Yahuwah. And I can prove that from the New Testament as well. All right, I'm not going to go into these mess uh, into great depth. I'm going to summarize this now on the three angels' message. We're back to the first angels' message. Fear God. Give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come. Worship Him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea. That's the fourth commandment. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. That's the seventh day of the week. Is this too much knowledge all at once? No. <laughs> 
It's a lot. It's a lot. My whole point is this. There's three prominent doctrines here. Fear God. And then it starts with this. It's a sandwich. Fear God. Worship Him. How do I fear God? By worshiping God. First four commandments. It's all right there in between. Did y'all see it? I'm going to hit this again next week. A little bit. When we start today. It's all there in between. How do I fear God? I worship the Creator of the heavens and the earth. God created the first Sabbath. Jesus demonstrated it for us. God created the first one. Jesus is the Lord of it. God created it. Jesus demonstrated it. Give glory to God. What did I say a little while ago? How do you glorify God? By keeping the cross of Christ before you. For it is the power of God toward us. The cross of Christ. Give glory to God. Give glory to God who raised His Son from the dead. There's 27 verses in the Bible that says God raised His Son from the dead. The state of the dead. That is the state of the dead. That's one of our prominent doctrines. Now I've hit two of them. Right from the first angel's message. The Sabbath day. The seventh day of the week today. State of the dead. When you die, you're in the grave. Now, if God resurrected Jesus and He shows us the state of the dead, did Jesus, our High Priest, our Lord, our Savior, Gospel of Christ, did He demonstrate the state of the dead for us? The Bible says that God will raise us up with the same Spirit that He raised the Son up with. What is the third one? For the hour of His judgment... The hour of God's judgment has come. By the way, the third commandment is, Thou shalt not take the Lord thy God's name in vain. Do you know His name? Do you know His Son's name? Do you know His name? Do you know His Son's name? Proverbs chapter 30. Don't take His name in vain. By the way, today I lay before you a blessing and a curse. God's Word will not return to Him in vain. It's going to accomplish the thing that He sent it forth to do. You hear what I just said? It can be either a blessing or a curse. For the hour of His judgment has come into the sanctuary. And right there we have the atonement taking place. Everything I just said from the first angel's message is a relationship between God and His Son. There's no third party. There's only two beings here. The Father and the Son. We have three prominent doctrines and we have the first great commandment. You want to preach the first thing, the three angels' messages with power? No first who God is. So is the protest over? No. The protest is not over. I will stay true to the end, even unto death. Don't let no one steal your crown. Let's go to prayer. Holy Father. Thank you for another beautiful Holy Sabbath day. Thank you for this opportunity to witness and to share your truth as it is in your word. Lord, we love you with all of our hearts, souls, minds, hearts, souls, strength, and mind. Keep us as yours from here into eternity. Continue to lead, guide, and direct us. Bring us into a more meaningful relationship. And for those here, Lord, that have never heard these messages, I ask that your spirit move upon them. Whether they be abroad, afar off, through the internet, or here in this sanctuary, let your spirit move upon them. Touch their hearts and their conscience. Bring truth to light. Push back all the works of darkness. Let only your 
your words and your voice be heard. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.